Um, so it's a lightning talk. During the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about one of uh, the gems of web development. I would like to tell you about Livewire, and I'm going to describe it in terms of the observer pattern. I'm hoping to give you a quick partial architectural sketch of the system that could be the perfect solution for your next project or something that you might not have tried. Um, if you already know and love Livewire, maybe this gives you a little bit of a look into a weird take on an observer pattern, but there's not really any time for introduction, so let's get technical. This is a text input. It was written in Blade, Laravel's templating language, and it is connected to Livewire and represents a Laravel model. It also has a label, hopefully type ahead someday. It was designed to work in tandem with a Laravel application and line up with a model. Um, someone is going to start to want to interact with this component, and that's where our choice of a front-end library um, is going to come into play. Uh, design patterns are named solutions that form our strategy, um, this whole web application, and I'm going to be just talking about a subset of the, the front-end. and. This blade directive is how the element becomes a blade component. Um, before we could look, the, before the form could look like this in blade, it looked like this. Um, just a basic element representation in a document object model. Uh, it's got also a label, separate element, a submit button, um, no style whatsoever, nothing going on, and there's a, at least a dozen ways that we could implement the functionality here, uh, which is why front end is so interesting. Um, let's name it. L for element, and uh, when we construct our Livewire component, we're going to pass in L um, and wrap it with additional met at methods and attributes, including an ID, um, some references to the last known state, the most current state, and um, a proxy. Uh, it's not a proxy pattern in general, but there's a, a small proxy going on in this element which notifies observers, um, which are the most current properties. Um, we'll do this with the generate, generate wire object method. Um, so then we've got a component come together with a, a couple additional things, and just like that, um, our element is alive. That's the background that I need you to know going into this, so let's talk about the observer pattern. Um, an observer pattern is really useful when the state of one object is going to affect some unknown other number of objects, which could be any number of types. Um, the concrete subject in this example is going to be the component, which we made the input element on our form. Um, the decoupling between this subject and the classes whose state are dependent on it when its state changes are the observers. Um, and this allows broadcast communication to an unknown number of subjects, which in this example are also component JavaScript components. I mean, when we write Blade, we think about using when we write liveware templates, we think about using Blade, but what's going on in behind the scenes is a lot of JavaScript that we don't have to write. So when I say a JavaScript component, and I'm talking about Livewire, I'm talking about the uh, JavaScript file of a component that's stored in, in Livewire if you want to read the code. So that probably could be clearer, but it's a high-level overview. Um, gives you a little bit of a sense of what a subject and an observer is. But there is a lot more, specifically, um, the behaviors a subject has to adhere to or be able to do when it, inher when it inherits these classes in an observer pattern include attach, detach, and notify behavior. And the component has all three of these things. Um, in addition to the AJAX functionality I'm going to be talking about throughout this whole pattern, there's a whole additional robust explicit event system. Um, Components can mount in the system using on, and they can also use hooks to uh, exist in a certain part of the, lo the life cycle. Um, uh, Livewire JavaScript observers are the ones that register with the system. So usually you would see this behavior um, in the subject, but we're seeing it in the observer, but the subject actually is the observer in this way of looking at things. So it gets a little bit confusing. It definitely has the functionality, though. Um, Detach is a kind of an interesting thing to look in into Livewire that I never even thought about before I started putting this talk together, um, but there's a lot of deregistration and cleanup behavior that's going on in Livewire that makes life so much easier that you don't have to think about it at all. It's really interesting. Um, but there's deregistration, which can come when an on method is, uh, is, has a returned method that is used to deregister the, the observer and just calling it deregisters it. 
Um, there's cleanup, and then there's destroy um, within the life cycle. Um, and then the notification happens in this system. There's also dispatch and wired out watch and the on the the way that that interacts with the on function. So there's a lot of different ways that the components in the front end of LiveWire meet this definition specifically. Um, and then when we're looking at the same component as an observer, there's a little bit of a managerial structure um, going on. Uh, the observers route AJAX requests in a certain way. Um, it's not officially called that or anything, that's just how I refer to it in my head. And uh, this is largely just a way to represent the mental image that I have of this pattern in LiveWire. So um, the concrete observer, which is the instance of the component when it's um, instantiated as uh, any of the um, components in LiveWire that are gonna be listening um, are basically mechanisms which are tied to the uh, a component via blade directives. They're atomic engines which have complex functionality and you can denote them quickly in blade markup syntax. Um, and then the concrete ob observers, uh, concrete uh, subjects are the specific um, component like I was talking about, the search component. Um, it has a getter, a setter, and stores state uh, inside it in the form of a snapshot um, which is updated with the AJAX request. Um, so lots of this behavior actually comes from web API standards which are inherited um, and overwritten in the components. So you can have adapting listeners like click and click and key down, which turn into wire click and wire key down. Um, there's also the wire model directive, um, which lets LiveWire know when values change, it needs to know about it pretty much immediately, and wire submit. Um, so when the input box's ephemeral attribute is updated to reflect a change in the value of the component attribute, LiveWire forms and manages an AJAX response um, that gets triggered uh, in the space between that set and get methods of the state, called the, um, and that state is called the snapshot, which is included in the encapsulated data in the AJAX request um, to the Laravel server and then updated on its return. Okay, so again, a little bit of a, a quick overview but a little bit more information about what an observer pattern is and how this is working as an observer pattern back and forth. But there is more because um, after we decided to use LiveWire, um, not only does it give developers an option to avoid writing JavaScript and using the library, um, I'm so sorry about that. Um, using the library makes associations between a front end component, a back end component, and a Laravel model feel more tangible. Um, and that same JavaScript component um, that was sending things to the uh, PHP component um, is going to be able to manage it um, through directives that start when LiveWire starts and are effective in a specific um, AJAX lifecycle. Um, so when you create the blade component, handle requests is gonna route the requests and register the component in the request behavior through that initial state that comes from the creation of the component called render component. And then they comp the AJAX request itself is handled at the right route um, through handle component. Um, now I'm gonna build up the pattern again just to go through it and give like more of a sense of, a, of the concrete relationship that I'm talking about. As the response is received by the observer, which can respond to the behavior um, identify and respond to a dirty state when a component's property has already changed and those values need to be updated to the DOM eventually with uh, Alpine. The wire model observer, um, which is going to update component properties in real time, uh, and give us speed and performance. And the observer, which manages um, a two-way entanglement between uh, LiveWire and Alpine, which makes the state updates um, very quick. <sighs> Gotta take a beat and uh, observe the rule of three here. Um, but when you take that last consideration of the, um, the observer and the PHP component, I just um, put the whole thing down, flipped it, and reversed it so it kind of fits into this larger um, thing that I'm going to do because I want to show you my visualization in my head of the LiveWire's two-way data flow with AJAX requests. And this process could start off with event detection or with user interaction, but it usually moves into a state change. 
Um, so now we have the JavaScript component acting as a subject and triggering through these directives, um, state changes and syncs, and usually an ASDAC request, a response from an observer turned subject, which responds to the subject turned observer by updating whatever DOM elements need to be updated and emitting notifications within, even, within an even more robust event notification system. Um, so I see this pattern in addition to the lifestyle hooks and events with their listeners as a wonderful example of a textbook pattern in a not so textbook application using decoupling to make a truly dynamic and responsive system where front end and back end app components can both be observers and receivers uh, and you have a two-way flow of data. Um, that was the talk. I'm Mary Perry. Find my socials on Pink Airy. And until next time, Laravel forever. Give it up. Thank you. Mary, that was fantastic.